Hey there, nerds. It's Maddie Adams, the channel where I research stuff and tell you about it. So let's learn together. Today, we're going to be diving into some of the biggest, most devastating floods in Earth's history. So put on your waders because these floods weren't just puddles on the sidewalk. They were continent rearranging, civilization redefining, apocalyptic deluges. You see, scientists used to believe that massive landscape changes, like the one seen in the Pacific Northwest and in other areas, took place slowly over thousands of years. The idea of sudden cataclysmic floods was dismissed for a long time, partly because of the prevailing uniformitarian view, which is the idea that geological changes happen gradually over time. But recent research, including studies on glacial outburst floods, such as the one from Lake Missoula, has shown that these events did happen rapidly, over days or weeks, not over millennia. This newer idea of more sudden flooding has gained mainstream attention, although there is still contention about how it happened, whether it was from an impact or from ice dams just slowly melting over time. So let's dive into it. A lot of people credit Randall Carlson with the idea that a comet impact caused the Younger Dryas cooling event, but while he's helped to make it famous, the theory was actually proposed in 2007 by a team of scientists including Richard Firestone and James Kennett. Today, we're diving into not just the Younger Dryas events, but some of the biggest and most cataclysmic floods in Earth's history. So as I said, there's contention about how this all happened. Is the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis actually accepted by mainstream science? The short answer is not really. While the idea of a comet-triggered apocalypse at 12,900 years ago or so has gained a lot of traction thanks to people like Randall Carlson, Richard Firestone, and Graham Hancock, most geologists and paleoclimatologists just aren't convinced. The evidence is debated, the impact site is missing, and alternative explanations like massive glacial floods messing with ocean currents are seen as more plausible, although an asteroid hitting a thick ice sheet wouldn't necessarily leave a crater. But let's not pretend that Firestone, Carlson, or anybody else in the modern era was the first to talk about massive, earth-shaking floods. These stories have echoed through human history, across cultures, across continents. Sometimes they've been tied to gods, sometimes to cycles of nature, sometimes just to warnings of what happens when humanity pushes its luck. And what's fascinating is that some of these stories actually might just line up with real events. So today we're going to connect the myths to the evidence, exploring the biggest, most earth-shattering floods in history. And of course, it's time for the obligatory YouTube thing. Click the buttons and do the stuff. I'd love to earn your subscription today. And make sure to share with a friend who enjoys science. And conversely, if you're about to click away, leave a comment letting me know why. I'd love the chance to improve my channel for you. First up, the Missoula floods, which would have made Niagara Falls look like water dripping from a faucet. Around 15,000 to 13,000 years ago, Massive glaciers in North America formed enormous lakes, including glacial Lake Missoula. Imagine a lake half the size of Lake Michigan, held back by an ice dam the size of a small mountain. If you're wondering what an ice dam is, don't worry, I got you. It's basically what it sounds like, a massive wall of ice that holds back an equally massive amount of water. These natural dams form when glaciers or ice sheets block the flow of meltwater, creating enormous glacial lakes. But if you've ever tried to go to an ice sculpting festival that was canceled because it's 40 degrees out, you'll know that ice like, isn't exactly like a stable building material, especially in a warming world. So over time, as temperatures fluctuate, tiny cracks form in the glacier. These cracks widen as the meltwater seeps in, refreezing and expanding like nature's version of cracks in a road. Eventually, as these cracks get larger, they create hidden rivers beneath the ice fast-moving tunnels of water that get stronger and stronger every year. Then one day, boom, the dam gives way, unleashing a wall of water up to 400 feet high, crashing across what's now Washington and Oregon. This didn't just happen once either, it happened at least 40 times. Water moved at nearly 60 miles per hour, stripping the landscape down to bedrock and creating the bizarre, scarred region known as the Channel Scablands. Even today, you can see massive ripple marks on the land some as big as houses left behind by these floods. Giant boulders called erratics were scattered across the region. They were carried miles from their original location. Dry Falls, a now dry waterfall, once had more water flowing over it than all modern rivers combined. Geologists studying this region have found clear evidence of these ridiculously cataclysmic events through sediment deposits and erosion patterns. 
Native American tribes of the region, like the Spokane, passed down stories of great floods reshaping the land. Some described a time when the rivers ran wild, carving deep gorges and leaving behind strange rocks. Around 12,900 years ago, Earth was warming up, glaciers were retreating, and things were looking good for early humans. But then something crazy happened. A massive freshwater flood, possibly from glacial Lake Agassiz, poured into the North Atlantic, and then it disrupted ocean currents, and it may have sent Earth into a deep freeze for another thousand years. Imagine people thinking, oh cool, the Ice Age, it's finally over. And then suddenly, nope, it's back. Scientists believe this was caused by actually something they're sort of afraid of happening today, the sudden flow of fresh water into the oceans, disrupting the AMOC. And over time, the salinity of the oceans did probably balance back out again, bringing the Earth back into a warming cycle once again about a thousand years later or so. So what caused this sudden flood? Some scientists suggest an asteroid impact or a comet explosion that melted massive ice sheets. Others believe glacial dams simply collapsed, releasing an almost unimaginable amount of water in mere days or weeks. The floodwaters left behind massive glacial debris, altered river paths, and even impacted soil chemistry in the region as they passed through. For early humans, this was a disaster. The rising cold and arid conditions wiped out megafauna like mammoths, while hunter-gatherer communities had to completely rethink their survival strategies. Some people even speculate that this event kickstarted the Neolithic Revolution, pushing humans towards ag agriculture as a way to adapt to this harsh new climate. Now, some Native American oral histories describe a time when the world was covered in ice and great floods reshaped the land as ice receded. The Clovis people, some of the earliest known inhabitants of North America, may have been directly affected by these changes, disappearing from the archaeological record as this period began. Now, let's jump forward a few thousand years to a flood that may have inspired some of the most famous flood myths in history, like the Bible. The Black Sea Deluge hypothesis suggests that around 7,600 years ago, the Mediterranean breached the Bosphorus Strait and sent a tidal wave of salt water into what was then a huge freshwater lake. This wasn't just a gentle rise in sea levels, it may have raised the water by hundreds of feet in a matter of months or even weeks. For people living around this ancient lake, it would have been an end of the world scenario. The world wasn't as interconnected as it is today, so even a large regional event would seem worldwide to them. Entire villages gone, livelihoods just destroyed. Some scientists believe this flood could have influenced stories like Noah's Ark and the Great Flood in the Epic of Gilgamesh. What's the evidence? Well, marine sediments found far inland, drowned ancient shorelines, and even archaeological sites suggest abrupt human migration. Some researchers argue that this was one of the earliest recorded climate refugees, people forced to flee their land due to rising waters. Now, let's head over to Europe where entire land masses were swallowed by the sea. Doggerland was a vast stretch of land connecting Britain to mainland Europe a fertile paradise where Mesolithic humans hunted, fished, and thrived. But between 8,000 and 6,000 years ago, rising sea levels, partially fueled by the melting of Ice Age glaciers, slowly drowned the region. Then, around 8,200 years ago, the Storega Slide happened, an enormous underwater landslide off the coast of Norway. This triggered a mega tsunami up to 80 feet high that crashed into Doggerland, drowning settlements and forcing survivors to higher ground. So there you are, four massive civilizations shaping floods that actually happened in Earth's recent past. If you're thinking, wow, I'm glad this stuff doesn't happen anymore. Well, let's just say rising sea levels are still a thing. Evidence suggests that since about 13,000 years ago, global sea levels have been rising, shaping our coasts and human history in the process. But hey, that's a topic for another video. If you enjoyed this one, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you want to see more mind-blowing disasters from Earth's past, check out some of the linked videos. And check out my Martian Geography series as well. Um, I've actually done mostly space content on this channel so far, but I'm going to continue to do more just other kind of things that fascinate me. So I hope you all enjoy. Make sure to check out all the links in the description of the video as well for different references to the images in the video. All right, take care.